Right, this section is all about export and import. Now we've seen how to back up and restore songs, but how do you transfer recordings if you want to play or edit or mix them on a computer? Now we've seen that each track is stored as one or more of these ZZ WAV files in the song folder, and that the machine magically jumps around from file to file when you're playing back the track to give a seamless performance. What we need is for the machine to do all this jumping around and create a single WAV file which represents this seamless performance. And that process is called exporting. And the name is a bit confusing, as to me, exporting a file means to transfer it from one system to another. And maybe that's why there's so much confusion in this area. When Tascam say export a track, what they mean is that the individual ZZ files for that track are collated and processed and a new file is created which can then be transferred to your computer. So it's a process and not just a simple copy operation. And the new file is not created in the song folder, it's created in a different folder called Audio Depot. And this folder is only used as a temporary holding location for files to be transferred. Its contents are irrelevant to the machine when you're recording or playing back. And also note the export process has no effect on your original recording. So to export one or more tracks, you have to first load the song. Export only works on the current song. You go to Menu, Audio Depot, press F2 to export, and you'll see a list of all the tracks for that song which contain recordings. This is the one I used earlier, where I recorded onto tracks 1 and 8, and cloned track 1 to track 2. So there's three tracks available here. So you select them using the F2 tick button, which toggles. We can select them all. You can select as many as you like. And when you're ready, press F4. Just confirm, three tracks to be exported. Yes, and that's done. Now it now shows us the contents of the Audio Depot folder. The names have been shortened, which is why they've got these little tilde squiggle characters in. We'll see the full file names when we go over to the computer. Now because new files have been created, this obviously needs free space on your card. So if your card is full, you won't be able to export anything. And there may be ways around this by backing up other songs so you can free up space. And we saw a way of doing this earlier. Now you may also see other files in this folder, like this test one, which have been left over from previous exports. Now it's up to you to keep this folder tidy. So once you've copied the files to the computer, there's no point leaving them wasting space on the card. So you can delete them either from here with the delete button or from the computer. So let's enable the USB link and have a look from the computer side. So this time we're looking at Audio Depot. And you can see the names of each exported file is based on the song name, which was called Demo, and the track number. So it's quite easy to identify them. And when you transfer these files to your computer, say into your DAW software, you'll find that the multiple tracks all line up from time zero, so that they will all play back in sync. Now if you tried using the ZZ files to do this before you realized, you probably found they were out of sync. Now, importing, as you expect, works in reverse. You just transfer any WAV files from your computer into the Audio Depot folder on the card, and then use the F1 import button to process that file into a nominated track. 
and you can only process one file at a time, so it's a bit more tedious than exporting. But as each import finishes, the file is deleted from the audio depot folder automatically. And now for the catch, the file to be imported must have the same format as the current song. This means there are only four possible formats. We have 16-bit at 44K, 16-bit at 48K, and 24-bit 44, and 24-bit 48K. And if the format does not match the current song, you may not see it here, or you may see it, but get an error when you try and import it. Okay, so that's the official route for transferring individual WAV files in and out of the machine.